All right, it's 2024, and this is what I currently drive. This is a Rivian R1T. Uh, my wife drives this R1S, but before that, we used to drive this Tesla Model 3. And before that, I used to drive this electric VW bus that I converted, right? So, as you can see, I have been driving electric cars for about 10 years now. And one of the questions that always, always came up is after the battery dies, what happens? So in 2024, electric cars are about 10, 10 years old. And so everything has happened. Everything from like cars are still running around in the original batteries to customers having to pay like $20,000 for a battery, right? So all that stuff has happened and it really, really depends uh, how much use the car got and what kind of use it got, right? So with me, I'm, this is the first time that I'm uh, in this place where I have to replace a battery and today I want to show you what exactly happens after the battery dies on electric vehicle. Alright, so this is the battery here and as you can see we're testing it and those are not coming up with any voltage up. These are 2008 production batteries that lived for five years in the Smart for Two car. And then they lived there for five years. Then we took them out. The whole fleet was decommissioned. So then we took those batteries and then we started putting them in our DIY things. I put them first on this bus right here. I drove that thing for about five, six years. And then after that, I moved them onto this bus right here. And then I drove this for another five, four, four and a half years or something like that. And then now we took them off because they're, they're done and you know after 15 years these batteries are done they've been in three cars and they're pretty much all bad but this is this is i think user error right we i just parked this car and i didn't turn the maintenance switch off we literally have a maintenance switch on all these cars that we build minus uh right there and i didn't turn it off because i i didn't plan for it for, to park this car that long. And so as a result of that, all the systems in the car just kind of killed the battery. Just like drove it down to zero, past zero volts. And it was there forever for a, probably a year. And so after a year, I went in there and I tried to charge it and it charged uh, enough for me to drive it a little bit, but then it just, it, it just died. So then I, it sat for here for another couple years. I was like, didn't have time to check it. And now we're finally getting around to checking it. And yeah, so these, all these modules are pretty much done. They have 15 groups of batteries, right? So it's a 15 S module and all of them have some groups that are dead except for one. And so we don't know if it's, I think we kind of checked most of these uh, fuses that have blown. As it turns out, most of those fuses are checking out. The other thing that it could be, it could be that these are Tesla style batteries, right? Early, super early. And so maybe that the fuse wires are the ones that broke. And if those are intact, then inside of the cell, there are, they could just open up. There's like fuse wires inside the, the cells and one whole group might have just gone or whatever. So we could test that right now and see, like take one of these apart and then kind of see. Okay, so here's one of these modules and they all have one dead group. You see this right here? This is a device that we're using to connect to the main uh, harness, the cable, right? And it's showing that group number five is dead. It's open circuit. Uh, and so then I took like the, the little covers off here to verify, just make sure that it's not just one of these wires. And yeah, sure enough, it is group number five. Okay, so here we have this module on the table and uh, it gives about 49 volts here at the, at the terminals, right? Oh, you know what? One more thing that I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and get rid of this because what if it's the fuse? Okay, so what we're trying to do here and see if those cells, that group of cells, it's open circuit, if it's really open circuit or it's just discharge, right? Because if it's just discharge, all you have to do is just charge it up and it'll be the same as the rest of the group. And now this module is, you know, quite on quote unquote usable, right? But if they're completely open circuit, then this, is, this thing is done. You would have to change that, that group there, right? Uh, all these, Cells are good except that one right there, that group. Um, but right now it doesn't seem to be doing that, right? Cause look, I'm going all the way to 60 volts and there's zero uh, current going in there. So it's, so it's open circuit, but it is a possibility that is this. So let me uh, rewire this, put that in there. All right, so confirm, yep, it's not the fuse. I just bypassed the fuse there and we're getting the same 
behavior here. This thing is unable to push any, any sort of power into this battery pack because we have a group of cells that is completely open circuit. Okay, so this is group five. This is the group that is open circuit. And as you can see, the fuse wires are intact on this side. Let's look at the other side. And here is group five from this side. I tried and pulled that little fuse wire away, but no, it didn't do nothing because it's pretty intact. So there we go. The cells inside open circuit. All right, so one of the reasons why they died might have been because we used this entire battery all those years without a BMS. And, you know, we were some of the first ones that we said that no BMS was better than a cheap BMS that would kill batteries. In those days, they used to kill a lot of batteries. And we got, you know, we got called crazy by a lot of people. And we were like, no, these batteries are high quality. They will work without a BMS that will charge up and then charge down and they won't drift apart. And, you know, here's proof that it did, you know, this, this is 10 years later, the battery died, but it didn't die in a fiery ball, you know, like it didn't burn anybody's house. It didn't burn. And we're using it without a BMS. I didn't even have boxes on this battery, right? Like this is like the worst case of how you could have used these batteries and they, they died in a very safe way. They just didn't wake up. They just opened circuit, you know? So it's like, like if somebody disconnected. So they turn out to be really, really safe. Now, the question relevant to this video is what happens now that 10 years later that your battery is completely dead? You know, how painful is it gonna be to replace it, right? Um, should we just throw away the car <laughs> or can we just, you know, one of the things that along the years that I would say is that, oh, by the time this battery is dead, there's going to be better battery and it's going to be way cheaper and you're just going to get that one and buy one. So let's do the math. This battery at the time when we put it in this car, used to, each module used to cost 750 bucks from EV West and then we had 14, right? So that's about $10,500 $10, worth of battery. Today, uh there's much better battery, right? These are 2,600 million powers. Now there's packs that we have that are much better like this one. So these ones are, you know, the same capacity, the energy density as the Tesla ones. And if we were to put the same 42 kilowatt hours uh, that we had on this car worth of those, it would be something around $5,000. So the new battery, it's about half the cost of the old battery. To replace a car battery in your Tesla is probably gonna be around the same thing. You know, you buy a Tesla today, 10 years later or 15 years later, the battery's dead. There will be a way to change that battery uh, for less money. It's not gonna cost the same as it is today, right? And so this is what we're gonna do here. We're just gonna replace it with a new style battery. $5,000, is $5,000 too much to uh, put in an old car like this? I, I don't think so. I Many watching this video might think so that it is, right? But these cars, you know, we, we threw a bunch of money in here. We put $10,000 10 years ago in a battery. And then now we're gonna replace it with a $5,000 battery that is gonna be much better. It's lighter, smaller, and it's gonna actually uh, work better. You know, because it's smaller and lighter and cheaper, we're actually gonna put more battery in there. And so it's gonna even become a better car. Uh, instead of giving you like 100 to 150 miles of range, now we're gonna have, you know, 200, maybe it's 250, depending on how you drive it. Uh, and so, yeah, we'll just put another $10,000 worth of battery in here. And then, you know, but we're gonna get double the performance out of that, right? And how much will that last? I don't know. Well, maybe like if, if, uh, if we put a BMS in there and we can prevent the, you know, this, this is a premature death. Definitely, like this battery should not be dead, but we we kind of neglected it. We just left it there. We let it go down to zero, and that's how batteries died, right? Had we not do that, would this battery still be good? Yes, I think it would. We would still be able to get probably another five years out of it before some of the groups would start dying or whatever. But you know, keep in mind, this is 15 year old battery packs, right? These are very early on, 2008, I mean, it was kind of unheard of for electric cars, especially using tiny little 18650s, right? Tesla was 
breaking ground here. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people call him crazy, you know? And so this is her Gen 1. This predates the first, pre the Roadsters were coming out at 2008, right? And they had the same cells, but they were different modules. This particular battery pack is dead now, but it probably could still be alive had we put a BMS in here or had I turned the switch, you know, have we taken some precautions, right? So I want to say this is even 15 years into its life, it's probably a premature death. And so the same thing doesn't have to happen to you or to your battery. The same thing is probably not going to happen to the next battery that we're going to put in this bus. Maybe 20 years from now, uh, maybe I'll make another video if I'm still alive and be like, hey, you know that battery, that second battery that we changed into that bus? It's still going, you know, or we're finally going to replace it for the newest, latest thing that is going to be. So if you want to find out what uh, what the new battery is going to look like, just stay tuned to the channel. We're going to be starting to do that in here. We have a few of these vehicles that we're going to be retrofitting. All right, so thank you for uh, joining me here. I know it's been a few years since I've done videos about these buses and these projects. You know, I've always we're talking about uh, how I'm going to finish them, and, you know, maybe rent them and all stuff. But, you know, this is, you know, this takes a lot of money and time to work on these. And so I'm like, ah, you know, slowly, you know, almost like after work and, and weekends kind of thing. Um, but now I think we're going to pick up the pace a little bit. So, yeah, thank you for watching all these videos all these years and if you're interested yeah just show up and we'll have new videos in these new projects